It's been a while, but I am back, hopefully for a while. Sadly, my job requires a lot of travelling these days, so it's a bit difficult to find time to do tutorials, but I do enjoy them. So today we're looking at the Render Grid plugin in Unreal. Now, the Render Grid plugin, if I find it, Render Grid, there it is, is the definition of undocumented, I would say. Uh, if you Google it, the only things you'll find are this video, I'm going to say, when it's out, as well as a form post asking with someone asking for more information about it, and no replies. Now, it's got a lot of complex stuff. It's sort of like a movie render cube 2.0, if you will, uh, with a lot of logic programming in there. So there is even some stuff relating to render farms in there that I'm slowly figuring out how to plug together. So when I figure that out, I will definitely share. But for today, we'll be looking at how to render variations using the Render Grid plugin. So I've got the Unreal Advertisement Future Future Careers in Advertisement project loaded up. So it's just a sort of uh, TVC sort of product shoot setup here. Now, if I go cinematic, so it just has the one uh, it just has the one sequence here that I've gone ahead and made some changes to and put a lava lamp in instead. Pretty basic. So now let's look at how we can render out a bajillion variations of this one shot using render grid. So what I'm going to do first is actually just open movie render queue and go ahead and add this in just because I need to make a config. So what I'm going to do is add, I'm going to do ProRes. I'm just going to do some basic stuff. So let's go LT, deferred rendering. Uh, let's go game overrides just so we get the high quality stuff. And let's leave the rest of this like that. Do 1080p. I'm going to go ahead and save the preset. Uh, let's save it here. Just call it main presets. Save, close. That's the only reason. You could also just right click and create a preset asset. It's just another way of doing it. Where are they stored? There we go. So you can also create it through the blueprint menu, but I just went through the movie render queue instead. So now that we have that, what I'm also going to go is right click. I'm going to go to the miscellaneous section and I'm going to create a render grid. Here it is, render grid. So RG, let's just call it main and go ahead and open it up. So this is what render grid looks like. Uh, it has a compile button because it has a logic tab. It has a heap of stuff in here for blueprinting. I'm not going to use that today. Over on our listing, however, we can add jobs. It looks sort of like deadline or conduct uh, tractor or whatever your favorite render submitter is. But what we can do here is go ahead and add a job and I can choose our preset and I can click on it and I can go ahead and add the level sequence we made. Now I have a viewport here for previewing, which I can actually scrub through, which is really handy. I can render out a preview frame, so I click that, it'll just fire up the render. Wait for shaders to compile, as always. Right, and how it's rendered after all that time. <clears throat> cool, so we can preview things like motion blur, depth of field, stuff that doesn't get previewed in the viewport. So the question is, how do we create variations on this? So that's where you might see here, it says remote control preset, which is quite interesting. So what we can do is use the remote control preset system to create a, I guess, expose objects that can be changed at runtime or render time. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and under remote control, there it is, create a remote control preset, CP underscore, and let's just call this probably cookie add. If I was to follow the naming convention of the project. So go ahead and open it up and now if you haven't used it in a while essentially in the details panel against all these objects is all of a sudden we're gonna start having these little eyeballs that we can use to tick and expose a property. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and click my lava lamp here and I'm going to expose the static mesh as a property here. 
then I'm also probably going to expose the location and rotation of it. Like so, we could also go through and maybe expose some of the lights if we wanted, like brightness or color. So let's do that as well. Expose property, expose property, expose property, expose property. Alrighty, after we've exposed those properties, we can go ahead back to render grid. I'm gonna make sure I save it, and I'm gonna load up that preset. And what you've noticed now is down in our job sort of section, we have all those exposed properties now. So what I can do is I can go ahead and I can, let's just scrub to the end. So we've got a lava lamp, let's duplicate this job, and on the duplicate, let's switch this to the camera. Oh, and now the camera's obviously got a different setup. So let's just good thing I exposed those properties as well. Right. So it is two. And let's spin it. There we go. So we've got a camera. Let's duplicate again. On this duplicate, let's do a one of the cool 80s stuff have we got in here. A Walkman. Sure, why not? I'm gonna drop that lower, negative three, so it probably works. Yep, maybe push it back a bit. Let's duplicate it again, and then I'm gonna maybe do a uh, computer screen, telephone, there we go. Let's set that back to zero. And then if we decide we want to change the lighting, for example, that's the exact same process. I could maybe, let's tint this, go for a maybe warmer look, a bit more brightness, ooh, a bit, a bit more brightness to it. Uh, where's our fill, is that this one? Yeah, bring that up a bit. There we go, so now I have, well, maybe I push this camera back a bit as well. So now I have one, two, three, four, four variations. Same animation, plays out exactly the same, except I have a telephone or a lava lamp or a camera or a Walkman. And so I can keep going, I can make different light profiles, I could change pretty much the entire scene here. And these are all saved. So when I'm ready, I can go and save the window grid. Now, I don't believe that there's anything I can do from the right click context menu is that great yeah I don't think so so once we're ready for rendering then all I need to do is hit render at the top and it'll go through and it'll render all the jobs for me just like that we even have the status in render grid so you can start to see where this system probably works as a render manager for net uh, like a render farm just because we've got, oh, that's done, now this is rendering. <laughs> so, I'm working on it, but uh, it's a little tricky at the moment to figure out how to set this up correctly for that. And of course, it isn't documented, so, bully to me. Too easy. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys didn't miss me too much. I'm going to try and get as many of these tutorials done. I've got a big list of stuff to get through. Tutorial-wise, before I head back overseas, the NFL season starting up, which means uh, Giraffic gets busy, as always. Otherwise, hopefully you also enjoy a bit more personal with the face cam. Otherwise, let me know and I will completely remove it. I would be happy to. Otherwise, thank you for tuning in and I'll see you later.